Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome to SOS Small Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Bonnie Bonadeo, and we're all about building brands that survive while developing people, you, to thrive. So thanks for joining. You know, there are days where you're just kind of emotional, right? And there are days where you have FOMO. Um, there's days where you swear you're going to, you know, shut down all of your social media accounts. And then there's days that um, you just don't feel worthy and you just feel like the biggest piece of shit, right? And then you've got everything going on outside of in the world um, and it just continues to weigh on you. Uh, the world is coming back now. Um, you know, I've already been on two trips in the last couple of weeks and got another one this weekend to ABS Chicago and another one after that Phoenix for some family time, which I am desperate for some family time. Um, and I'm just feeling burnt out and it's natural. It's natural for us to kind of go through these stages of this, you know, where we feel like we're working too hard and we're not seeing the fruits of our labor. We're not seeing the, the return on our investment of time. We're feeling left out or betrayed to some degree even by ourselves. And there's, there's just an enormous amount of stress attached to that. And so, you know, today I want to talk a little bit about the life raft theory. Um, and we're in the mindset category of the some strategy framework. Um, and the life raft theory is, is kind of like the oxygen mass theory where you've got to take care of yourself first before you can take care of anybody else. And as leaders, and business owners and, you know, salon spa owners, there's a million and one things that are going on right now. And one of the things that seems to be going on quite a bit from most of my client base that I, that I talk to every week um, is that they have a high client demand um, and they cannot get people on board and trained up fast enough to be able to take on some of the demand. And we never want to say no to a customer and we never want to make a customer wait for very long. We're thrilled to have, you know, all of this business going on right now. But the truth is, is we're probably overextending ourselves and we need to kind of look at that from a point of, are we doing things that are progressing our business or are we doing things that are burning out? ourselves and our team in there. So it's time for the life raft theory here. Okay. And, you know, and it's really just like, do you need to throw yourself a life raft right now? Do you need to just stop and, you know, stop drowning and wading and swimming really hard and just hang on to that life raft for a minute and catch your breath and start, you know, to look and see, am I doing too many things and not getting a different result. Am I doing too many things and thing, other things are falling through the cracks, right? So, you know, as you know, we go into this some framework here, and this is a conversation that can be had in anything, you know, from sales, operations, mindset, marketing, and education, you know, burnout is burnout. And uh, I feel burnt out right now. I don't know about you. I feel burnt out right now, but we are in mindset, which is kind of perfectly timed. It's, it's you know, there's, there's no such thing as a coincidence. And the synchronicity of this is, is really interesting for me. You know, like I have been working diligently the last couple of months because I got a new CRM system. So a customer relations management system um, would be like software system um, really supports people like me that are coaches and in all of that type of uh, having to redo because once I all of my pages. So my customer base was able to try any previous emails that I had, they all just had to go away and I'm starting from scratch. And I, I think I'm just at this point of burnt out and overwhelmed by it all. So mindset is perfect for you. All right. So let's look at some truths. Um, doubt. Oh, a lot of doubt showing up. Um, you know, salon owners doubting, you know, do I want to be in this for another five years? Um, uh, you know, I need, I need to figure out a plan of action that, you know, I'm hiring the right people to be able to run in this business. Cause I don't want to be doing it solely or by myself anymore. And then of course that kind of goes into some budget issues that are bigger and deeper conversations when we're in that, but doubt can sometimes just be, you know, I just need some time off, but I can't take time off. Um, I need to, I need a vacation. I need to get away there's nowhere to go. Everything is booked or flights are really outrageous right now, or it's just, it's crazy right now. Okay. All of that doubt, just keep talking yourself through it. Okay. It's, it's kind of like that, that you're 
you're at the point where you're in the water and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're thinking somebody's going to come rescue me here. Somebody's going to come save me here, but you're not willing to give up. And, you know, just as soon as you're like, okay, I'm done, I'm giving up. That's when somebody throws you the life raft, right? So, you know, we do have a tendency to keep doing and we will always, as humans, we'll always have this particular behavior of doubt attached to it. Um, but the other truth is, is that we've got a crazy society going on right now. I mean, we're literally watching war on TV, not a war movie, okay? Not war from, you know, war films from, you know, back in the day when we had wars, we're watching this Ukraine-Russian war going on right in front of our eyes. And we're feeling like, what can we do? Why is this happening? Why can't we get along? What, what happened to the, be able, the leadership? Um, why isn't anybody communicating? What is it exactly they want? Why aren't they telling them? Is there, is there some negotiation that could be put in play here? All of that stuff, you know, like we're business people, right? We're thinking about this and we're like, how could this be handled differently? And it's like, oh, add more sanctions to them. And, and I know that's, you know, these are things that are effective, but not incredibly effective. And I know that we're not trying to put ourselves into war or anybody else for that matter, but it's, it's heart-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching to watch this and then to think that, oh, and I'm worried about hi hiring a hairstylist or an esthetician or a new assistant, you know, in my world type of thing. Like the, the, the dichotomy of this is not in sync. And so then we kind of go into this, like, why am I doing this? What's the purpose? Um, we fall back into that doubt. But the truth is, is we still have to live our lives as they are and as we intend them to be in spite of what's going on in the world. And we can still be empathic to what's going on. We can find ways as an individual or as a community or as a society to be able to help support what's happening in other parts of the world. Um, and I know that doesn't in the end make you feel good, but um, I will tell you this, shut off the news. Like, you know, I like to be informed. Um, I like to, I mainly like to read my news online. That way I can kind of, I get to choose what I am seeing and hearing and reading and all of that stuff. But even there, it's too much for me. And I've just had to back away and backing away makes me feel um, like I don't care. It makes me feel like I don't want to be aware of what's going on in the world or that I don't have a voice in what's going on in the world. Um, and I want to have a bigger voice and I want to have, I want to feel, you know, the, the support and help other people to feel supported in the world, because that's kind of who I am as a leader as well. So let's look at leadership expectations as another truth. You know, uh, we look at leaders and we're saying, oh my God, he's a dictator. And then we're looking at other leaders and saying, oh, he's weak. Or we're looking at other leaders and saying what a hero he is. And, you know, and we're, we're creating these measurement tools on all this different leadership going on. And we have to think, how, but how are we leading our teams right now? What leadership expectations does our team have of us? And how can we continue to be there for them and understand that maybe whatever we're feeling, they're feeling too. And that not to, not to reduce expectations or to reduce, you know, um, what should be what they should or should not be doing, but we have to just be more compassionate as people is and in these expectations that we have. And then of course, the final thing is is the drama. There's there's so much drama still going on. You know, you could call it division, and you know, I'm right, you're wrong type of thing. But at the end of the day, you know what it is? It's drama, because usually in that case, that means that somebody's a victim and somebody's a villain, and then somebody has to show up as the hero. And I, I, I've shared this with you guys before. I'll share it again in a more um, thorough and intense approach called the, the drama triangle. Um, and when you can look at this drama triangle type of piece, you'll realize that anytime you're playing a part, a role, victim, villain, or hero, that you're keeping drama intact. And that ultimately the, the, the best leadership you could do is to remove yourself from any one of those three roles and try to be a more emotionally intelligent leader, which is somebody who's managing their emotions, somebody who's making the connections and engagement as necessary, and somebody is showing um, 
a way or a vision to solving problems, a brighter future, whatever that is. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so less drama, less drama as well. And, you know, turning off the news is also a way to be able to have less drama <laughs> as well. So I looked at the sub strategy that I present from and that my framework that I work with my clients from, and I thought, okay, here's, here's this point, you know, I I'm in, I'm in doubt. I'm, I'm questioning everything that's going on in the world. I'm questioning why I'm doing what I'm doing because it doesn't seem that important at this point. And I have to go back and look at these five elements of the sum strategy and say, how does that play a role in who I am? And how does it play a role towards others? So let's take a peek at this, all right? So the first strategy is sales, right? So I want you to think about selling to yourself. Like, I have been in the last couple of days in doubt and frustration and overwhelm and burnout and all of that stuff. And I'm not selling myself very well. I'm, you know, kind of feeling mediocre. I'm feeling like, oh, I don't want to put myself out there when I'm feeling this way. It, it's, you know, it just doesn't feel good. And then people will pick up on it. People will sense it type of thing. But most find it uncomfortable to brag uh, or to be comparing or we're comparing success we're, you know, we're on the Instagram or the Facebook or the TikTok, and we're like, you know, comparing ourselves to these people that might look or appear more successful than we are on these things. And so then comparing success is kind of adding more of that self-doubt. And there's also this part where we might be feeling really good about ourselves, that we have numerous credentials to be able to say that we are this and we are that and we are the best and we are you know, this is, you know, we are wealthy and we're successful and we're making all this money and everything, but, but, you know, that doesn't necessarily buy you business. It doesn't buy you friends either. Okay. So you could be an influencer and have a ton of followers, but maybe not be connecting with the followers as they see you in a way that makes them feel good. It might make them feel, um, bad about themselves in there. You could be also be under credentialed. In other words, you could feel like, I don't even have enough experience. I don't have enough credentials. How am I going to make it in the world? And, you know, we have to, we have to look at all of these other people, like find the mentor of somebody that, you know, didn't have to go through all of this and ha still have success. Um, Zelensky, you know, I mean, it was like, he was a comedian, he was an actor and a comedian. And now he's, you know, the president of Ukraine and he's, his compassion and his, you know, his, his voice, everything about him is, is you want to help him, right? You know, is he credentialed enough to be the president of Ukraine? Who knows? But look at how he's showing up as a leader for um, the world, not just Ukraine, the world. Um, and then we have this tendency to think, well, they don't want to hear about me. They, you know, it, when selling yourself and, 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 I, and anytime you're putting yourself out there, you're selling yourself, right? But they don't want to hear about me. They just want to hear about my product or they just want to hear about how I, you know, how I fix their hair. They just want to hear about, you know, you know, how I do my eyelashes or whatever the case is of the business that you do. They don't want to hear about me. And it's not true. For you to feel connected, you have to be connected with you in order to connect with them. So this is my main tagline is connecting you to you so you can confidently connect better with others. So when you're not connected to yourself, you're definitely not going to connect well with people out there. And the way that you connect with yourself is to share more of you, share more of you. So, you know, I used to do these podcasts every week. Um, I, I, Hey, the world is picked up. Everything's picked up. I'm on the road now. So I haven't been able to do them every week and I'm feeling bad about that, but I got to take care of me. Right. So if we looked at how to sell ourselves to ourselves, now we need to look at selling ourselves to others. Okay. Are you selling who you are to others that, you know, that unique you? Um, are you selling your business to others? Are you selling your expertise to others? Are you selling some type of advocacy approach to others? Or maybe you're selling just your level of empathy for others, uh, understanding, um, you know, letting them know that you're there. Uh, maybe you're selling your leadership skills, or maybe you're an educator and you're selling you know, what you educate on and yourself as an educator type of thing. And we look at this and we're like, but I, you know, I could do this. I have to do this. This is how I make money. This is how I make a living type of thing. But I want you to go back into that selling yourself to yourself. 
and start there first, because that's, that's saying you need the, you need to have the hold of the life raft first, and then you can invite other people onto the life raft that might need help. Somebody's got to have the life raft and be in control of it, right? Okay, so the next piece is operations. Are you operating efficiently as yourself? Do you have systems for success? Um, do you have a consistent approach to how you manage things personally? Um, can you be counted on? Um, are you living in your values? And do you have a strong foundation or support system around you that um, keeps you stable, keeps you stable, okay? So, you know, your systems for success might be that you get up at a certain time, maybe you work out, maybe you meditate, maybe you you read, you know, a book a week or, or, or something like that. You know, your, your values and your foundation are critical to you operating efficiently as yourself. Otherwise you will sink. And, you know, or you won't have the, 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 the vision or the energy to go after that life raft that is out there waiting for you. You just don't see it because you're not operating efficiently as yourself. Then you have to think, how can I help others operate efficiently? And this is really true in our industry of beauty because we are transactional by design. You know, people come in, they get a service and then they leave. And, and because it's people-based, and time-based and service-based in all of those areas, we really do need to understand how to operate efficient, efficiently. So then we have to have these expectations. Um, am I helping others operate with these expectations? You know, how to be, how to start, how to create, how to close, all right? Is it duplicatable? Am I teaching them a system that is duplicatable that they can learn from it and repeat it? And I don't have to constantly be, there for them in every part of that process. Can they be counted on? Can they be counted on for you? Um, are you helping them to see results and outcomes in a positive way? Um, are you keeping them on track when they're not getting the results or the outcomes? Are you just letting them, you know, drown out there in the sea? Um, are you building trust as an operation efficiency? Okay, trust is a is a big thing in operations efficiency, um, because if people don't trust you, then the system that you implement will not be supported. And the system that you create, sometimes you have to train them on it in order for them to understand it, in order for them to trust it, and to be able to see the value in it. And these are ways as a leader that you need to help them to be able to operate efficiently, efficiency, efficiently. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Now, you know, Amazon is a perfect example of, you know, that trust factor in it. You know, if, if Amazon didn't deliver, if they, you didn't get what you wanted, if you got the wrong thing all the time, um, if you didn't get it in a timely manner, if it wasn't at a fair price, we would not be doing business with Amazon, but they are operationally efficient. But well, they're excellent, operationally excellent in what they're doing there. So then we have to look at our business, even though it's a people business, and even though it's a service business, and even though it, it's, it's still a transactional business, just like what Amazon is. So we got to put systems in place to be able to help support that and to be able to make all of that more duplicatable and less work, less stress, okay? Okay, now we're in the topic of mindset, which is how we started out here today. Um, mindset for yourself. Are you taking care of yourself? Again, this is the ultimate oxygen mask theory, right? Are you putting the oxygen mask on you first and then assisting others with it if needed, okay? are you taking care of you? You know, I try really hard to take care of me, but when burnout happens and boredom happens, like I, I feel like I'm in this burnout boredom phase because I'm sick of e eating everything that I'm eating. I'm sick of, you know, the same old shows on TV, definitely sick of the news. Um, I'm still inspired by my work and I'm still inspired by my role in the salon. Um, and it, that's what keeps me going, but that's also where I put all my energy to when the rest of my life is boring. And with that, then I feel overwhelmed, overworked and, you know, not appreciated as much. Yeah. And this is where you have to manage your time, manage your emotions and get the guidance that you need. So as a coach, I have a coach, um, as a coach, I have a assistant to help me um, take the burden off of some of these things. Um, so I 
I have friends, I have family, I have that support system that provides me the guidance that I need. But the truth is, I'm, I, I am a strong willed person and I'm not going to show a lot of weakness. A lot of times like vulnerability is not my thing necessarily. Um, and so I won't go to the people that I'm closest to and let them know that I'm not doing well. So I still need outlets of those particular people in my life that I can go to and say, Hey, do you got a minute? Or you know, I'm just, I'm just at this, I'm just in a funk right now. And, you know, just want to, can I just talk it through? Because I know when I hear the things that I'm saying, I can, I can see where the problem lies and I can usually fix it myself and not be, um, you know, overly concerned about it type of thing. But we need to really make sure that the mindset piece is, is in place for ourselves, most importantly, because we're coming off of the craziest two and a half years of our lives here. And with that, disease and disease is going to start spiking here because we're we're not in that we're not in that moment of that life that we want to be in. And I think that you know the Academy Awards, you know the Oscars, whatever they call that, um, I think was apparent in that. You know, and no matter what you saw of it and what opinions you have of it we do all have a breaking point and, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, it's because we are unhealed. It's because we are unhappy. It's because we are, um, you know, over overworked and we have to be able to, we have to be able to make this work. So now mindset for others, how do you help others? So first of all, you have to have a good space for yourself, but how do you help others with their mindset when they're, you know, bored in the doldrums, depressed, anxious, whatever these words are. Okay. You have to be the leader. You have to absolutely step up and be a leader in these situations. You have to make sure that you have a voice and that that voice has enough clarity for people to respond to, especially if these are people that are working directly with you. Okay. Um, share stories, share stories to let them know that, you know, you're just as human as they are as, as well. Um, sometimes people need social proof. You know, they don't always want to see you like at your best all the time um, as success, as, you know, as this, this go-getter person, as this driven person, you know, they want it. They, not that they want to see you fail, but they, they want to see you have moments of vulnerability. So it's whether it's yours or somebody else's, sometimes they need social proof. So, you know, if somebody's having a bad day or somebody in your life is their mindset is a little off, it's usually a, a soul issue. Okay. And, and you just have to make that connection with them in order to make them feel better. It's not about trying to fix them. And it's not about trying to redirect them to some task or, you know, work specific expectation. Maybe they just need to release something a little bit. So be there for people, you know, you just got to be there for people and that helps them to keep on track. And they will definitely respect and appreciate and value that moment that they can have if they're feeling down and it helps them feel better about themselves. Yeah. Now, as we talked about on the front end of this with the sales, you know, how to, how to sell yourself, it's kind of the same thing with this marketing approach. You know, how do you market yourself in here? And you have to ask the question, are you even sellable? You know, is what, is what you're marketing about yourself, what people need or want? And that's a question that I ask myself all the time, you know, because everybody's complaining that they can't hire anybody and that hiring is the biggest, you know, uh, uh, thing in our industry, the biggest challenge in our industry right now. I've done three master classes on hiring that, that is, that it's really good. It's really good stuff. And I have maybe five or six people show up to it at best. So is that really what your issue is? Or are you just not taking the right steps in order to make it a non-issue? Or are you ignoring it because it seems like too big of an issue to deal with at this point in time? But we're talking about marketing yourself here. And so what makes you special? What are you offering? Why should they care? Um, and what is your expectations and your outcome of what you're trying to achieve? You know, be, have, have some clarity around all of that when you're marketing yourself and be, be real, be authentic. I mean, this, again, this was an area that I told you is not, is not an area of expertise for me. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a taskmaster, right? 
Um, I don't want to get on there and be all personal and vulnerable and stuff like I'm that that's, you know, the, the generation behind me, they're doing great at it. Um, I do what I can do and need to do, but it's not my go-to, right? So if you're thinking you're not doing enough or you need to be doing more of this or more of that, you know, just give yourself a break, give yourself a moment here, um, or find somebody that can help you to better market yourself. So marketing yourself to others, um, help them to understand what is it you are trying to solve, um, help them to understand that it does take you being personable and connection and engagement. But ultimately I like in a marketing strategy. So marketing to others, helping others to better market is you have to ask the questions and it's, it, you guys, this can be really basic here. It's, you know, why, what, where, when, who, and when, no, I'm sorry. And, and, and how, yeah. Who, where, 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 when, um, you know, those, you know, all those questions, just keep asking yourself those questions. And as you start to formulate the answers, you'll realize that that in itself is a marketing approach and a marketing campaign. It's also how you can help other people to feel better about themselves. So if you have a, a stylist that, you know, or an employee that's had a bad week and everything, and they're like, I just had all these cancellations, or I don't know where all my clients are and everything, just help them solve the problem of how to better market themselves. Um, but, you know, first listen and be empathetic and um, empathetic and compassionate towards what they're going through, because, again, giving them solutions right off the bat without hearing people out um, doesn't feel good either. It doesn't feel good either. So people sometimes just want to be heard, valued and respected. OK, and the last piece here is educating yourself. OK, so the last part of the sum framework here is education. So educating yourself, finding your worth, building your strengths, overcoming your challenges, investing in self and investing in your future. I'm constantly investing in me. Um, sometimes too much. Sometimes I don't always get around to it right away. Uh, sometimes I say yes too many times where I'm like, mm, I really know that I don't need to be, I don't need to be doing that right now. Um, I need to be putting things into action right now, not thinking that I need to learn more stuff right now. But anytime you're investing in yourself, it's worth it. But look at it from helping other people to educate for themselves or educating others. You know, teaching and sharing and trainings, I, I see them as a gift. Like it's a gift that I love to do this. And it's a gift that in the most part, I really give away a lot of information to be able to support people without the expectation of, you know, uh, a high price coach where, you know, you got to pay me for all of my advice type of thing or my, or my guidance. Okay. I think it's a gift. I think it's a gift to provide for others in this way. It's, it's, you know, the essence of passing on wisdom. Um, I see it as being a mentor a lot of times. And that is a, that is a cup that I always want to make sure stays full. So yes, I'm a teacher. Yes, I'm a trainer. Yes, I'm a coach. Yes, I'm a consultant. You know, all of those things, all of those buckets need to be filled. But this bucket of being a mentor is the one that always should be filled because I just want to be a contribution to others in any way that I can. And then of course, you know, making, making that investment in people. Um, helping other people to see the value that they bring to the world. And then, of course, sometimes educating others helps make that investment in your future business as well. They respect value and appreciate what you've done for them in that way as well. So, all right, you guys. So that kind of, you know, sums up the sum strategy here. And it gives you that sense of that no matter what, no matter what we're doing in our business, we have to look at it from our personal side. Um, why we're doing well, why we're not doing well, what do we need to be doing better, who can help us to do this better, all of those things. So uh, we are one quarter away into 2022. So the first quarter of the year is already over with. January, February, and March are in the past. And if in fact you are still struggling <clears throat> and you don't have a plan or you're not quite sure where to be focusing your attention on, or you feel like you got too many things going on and you need to kind of narrow it down, I'm here to help you. So you got two options. One is that, you know, to set up a free strategy session with me. And the other one is to just download my free 2022 SOS strategy workbook. Okay. It's not too late. We're only a quarter into this. And even, even come the end of June, I'm going to say the same thing. It's not too late to, you know, pick up where you left off 
or to start from scratch with it. So you can download the free SOS strategy workbook here at salonhiringsuccess.com. Um, yeah, I think that is the uh, hiring workbook there. Um, I'll make sure that I post the right link to this here. So, <clears throat> and you can also set up a complimentary call with me. So you can go onto my website, bonniebonadeo.com, <clears throat> click on my coaching page, and right there is an opportunity for you to set up a free session with me. And let's talk about where, where you're at, where you want to go, and how do you think you're going to get there? And then ultimately, I'll be able to share with you, put this, help you put a strategy together in one of these, some areas and be able to then look at how you can implement that and how to keep on track with that. And if you see the opportunity to work with me as a coach, great. If not, I totally get it. Sometimes that's a timing thing. Um, but I do also have a program coming up down the road um, in May that you may be interested in, a six-week program uh, for marketing and hiring. And again, it's a big challenge we're having, so I'm here to help. Um, but you know, join my Facebook page or Facebook group page. Um, it's SOS Small Biz Success. And um, if you, and it's got my name on the end of it, Bonnie Bonadeo. So if you join that page, um, there's more information and more opportunities for you to tag on to some of this mentorship and some of this uh, uh, education that I deliver out there and have access to it, even if you can't make some of the scheduled things that I have planned. All right, guys, thanks for hearing me out and, uh, you know, just sharing it today picked me up. My self-doubt is diminishing um, and I'm feeling better about myself and uh, ready to take on the world for the rest of the day. All right, guys, thank you for always listening. Thank you for sharing this podcast. Um, let me know uh, anything else that you want to hear. I've got some guests coming up the rest of this month. So I've got Trace, um, uh, who's going to be talking about consultations. I've got Karen Gordon, who's going to be talking about hair loss and how that is an, uh, you know, could be a new niche within your uh, salon environment in order to bring in some extra revenue in there. So be sure to tune in. Um, these podcasts uh, are dropped out every Wednesday or um, on Wednesdays, most Wednesdays at this point, um, while I'm in the busy season of our uh, beautiful industry, show season and busy season of our industry. All right, but I will see you next week. Bye.